Now, one very, very, very useful neurodynamic test, because it kind of shows us what's going on throughout the whole of the, the neural tissue or the neural uh, nervous system, is the slump. But it's also a very useful um, treatment technique. Uh, we would be talking a little bit about treatment techniques for trigger points and what, um, various things like that. And it's quite a nice way we can actually, some people call it flossing, other people call it sliding and gliding. But uh, it's a nice technique and it can be particularly useful for um, figuring out what's going on around the lumbar spine and also uh, in the, the lower quadrant or even the upper quadrant. It's one of those tests that you need to be very careful again, with. Again, there's no place for the cavalier attitude or putting people into slump because it looks like a lot of fun because it can be really, really quite aggressive. Earlier I kind of explained a little bit about nerve. If, if we, I try to demonstrate, I like using um, little analogies because uh, it helps me think. But it's, if one thinks of uh, the nerve as a big tube, and it's full of axoplasm inside that big tube. Now, if you had a nerve and it was stretched like that, one can see, as I'm stretching it, it gets thinner. What could be stretching? Why, why would that suddenly become stretched? Because it could have been caught at an interface like your facet joints or going through a muscle and held tight there. And then as somebody moves their lower limb or their upper limb or their back, the neural tissue gets stretched. There are a number of points along the length of the, the nervous system where there's less mobility or more mobility of the neural tissue. One is sort of at the, the base of the occiput, another's around C6, another's around T4, T6, L4, piriformis, head of the fibula. And what happens is, is the nerve isn't, may not move as easily or may move too much at those particular points. And there may be a tension sort of gradient going in different directions. So, so one can be aware of that. But simply by using the slump, what we can do is we can sort of say, well, okay, is this coming from a back or is it coming from, from something else or, or, or is it a peripheral nerve? And it's basically a sequence. Basically, we, we load the, the neural tissue by getting the, the patient to go into slump. But uh, even if we're not confident of what we're, we're um, trying to analyze and look at, and it can be quite general, it's a great treatment technique as well. So it's worth just looking at this just from the point of view of being able to slide and glide or floss the neural tissue, which may have effect on, say, the trigger points in muscle tissue. So the slump is, is uh, useful. Be careful with it. As I've said, it's, a, it's quite handy. It's very handy for flexibility as well, just generally. And uh, we're now going to talk, look a little bit at the sequence of the slump. I mentioned a little bit about the sort of structure of the, the nerve, the axoplasm and flowing. If it's compromised, the possible formation of uh, ion channels at the wrong point and the sensitization. I just want to try and demonstrate a little bit what actually happens with a nerve. If we, if we get the patient just to drop their head down, just drop your head down like that, and then slump like that, and now just bring your leg up straight. You can see, ordinarily, you would see that this, this nerve is stretching because I've, I've kind of put it at, at the various points. So, so now what we're going to do is the actual slump, the sequence would probably be, or well, you can do it from the foot up or the head down, but the normal sequence would be just to get the patient to drop their chin, so just sit up straight, just drop your chin down, slump from below your chest like that, and then put your arms behind your back, so it's, they're just relaxed like that, and then I basically just want you to straighten your leg up, and then you can pull your foot up. And that would be it. So basically you've now got the, the neural tissue and you can probably feel your toes a little bit there. Or you might not be able to because you're very flexible. But if I was to come along and bring her foot right up here, she would feel it. So we can use that as a test if I just get you to sit up and relax. Because somebody could say, okay, I drop my chin down and I flex there. And they can say, I've already got pain. So you're starting to think anything from here down is a problem. Or they can say, that's not really bothering me. And now I, I bring my leg up, and oh, that's hurting. So now anything from along here 
could be hurting. We can then differentiate by just getting you to straighten up. Your, sorry, keep your leg up straight and straighten your back and your head. And they say, oh, the pain's gone off. So now we know that when we straighten this up, but she's still got the pain. So the pain could be coming from anything along here. I get you to lift your foot up. Sorry, your leg will be straight and pull your, to your toes up towards you. Oh, yeah, that hurts. It's down here. It's probably likely to be uh, anything from here down to her foot. Bend your knee. Keep your foot up. Keep your foot pulled right up. And they're saying it still hurts, so it's going to be down from their knee down to their foot. So we've got a way we can actually break up where we think we're going to be wor working. As a treatment technique, it's absolutely superb, this sort of flossing. Uh, if one thinks that we've got this, all this neural tissue is going through the facet joints, the muscles, and basically we're trying to go, ee, 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 just like we'd be using dental floss. The more scientific term uh, is like sliding and gliding. So basically we're trying to just slide the neural tissue and glide the neural tissue. Sounds a little bit more uh, professional, I suppose, than flossing, but there we go. So what I would say to the patient, I would say, right, okay, just drop your head down slump down from your chest down there, lift your foot up and your leg up and then as you do that bring this part up, drop your leg down, bend your head down, slump, leg up, come back up, down, up, down, up and the model's done it absolutely brilliantly. It doesn't always work like that. Sometimes you have to really really explain to people what's going on. So this is a way where you can slump and use it for, for flossing. For the testing portion of it, you may want to add in or take out elements, depending on what you're looking at. And for the, uh, the treatment, it's quite simply just a case of sliding it and gliding it, or loading it and unloading it, or flossing it, however you want to think of it. For the testing element, again, head down, slump from your chest down, just lift your leg up, no pain, pull your foot up, no pain. Sometimes you may want to come in holding them and just move them across like that for the very flexible people. Or, and I'm pretty sure if we do this now and we see that you can actually see the nerve, the nerve or our rubber nerve stretching quite a lot. And then you can take parts out of it to, to give you an idea if there is something compromised muscular wise or around the interfaces. Again, please, 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 be very, very careful with this technique. It can be extremely aggressive.